around you. So if you're in the room with somebody you've been quarantined, been quarantined with, go ahead and give them a hug right now and um, just be thankful. Thankful that there is there is that opportunity right now, and I'm looking forward to more in the future with you as, as we hopefully can come together sooner than later. Um, but I don't, I don't know about you, but I think decision making has sort of been minimized to a degree because, you know, with the different stores closed, not being able to go out to dinner, and, you know, all of those things that have limited a little bit of decision. Um, you know, a day has recently consisted of, are we going to clean the house, or are we going to work in the yard, or are we going to eat, or are we going to Home Depot, or Target. <laughs> so there haven't been a tremendous amount of decisions to make lately, but as things begin to transition, and counties begin to open up, and businesses begin to open, you know, those decisions are going to start to broaden. Um, and I, I just, I can say for myself, sometimes making decisions is difficult. Um, I struggle sometimes with, if I make a decision, is it going to be a right decision or a wrong decision? But, you know, I can honestly say there's one decision that I've made in my life that is always right, always has been and always will be right. And that decision has been to follow Christ and to live for Him. Because what has come from that has been nothing but good. Um, always good. Not easy, but always good. So I encourage you this morning, if that is a decision that you have not yet made, or that you may be entertaining, um, I just, I pray and encourage that that will stir within you to realize that this is a decision. When you say yes, to God, and when you say yes to Jesus, you will never be sorry. So sing with me, will you, as we begin to worship him this morning, give him glory, give him praise, and just tell him how much we love him. Um, join me in that this morning and allow him to stir in your heart and in your soul and in your thoughts um, to just draw you closer to himself. And allow you, give you the courage and the strength to say yes to him. Yes, I will sing your praise. Yes, I will serve you. You will never be sorry. Father God, as we come before you this morning, ready to worship and, and bring your word this morning that your Holy Spirit would just do a work, a mighty work in each one of our hearts. Stir us, God, and uh, draw us closer to yourself, to your truth to who you are, God, and help us to say yes. Yes, I will serve you, seek you, and live for you. And I will never be sorry. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Yes, I will. Oh, 
to surrender, to say, yes, I will. I will serve you. I will seek you. I will live for you. I will lay down my agenda. I will lay down my thoughts, the things that I think are the way that I think they should be. Trust that's the desire of your heart this morning is to know him more. Father, we just surrender to you this morning. It's you we want to know more. It's you we need to know more. Scripture teaches us that you already know us. You, you know more about us than we know about ourselves. But God, we need to know you more. And so before we get into your word today, before we go any farther in the service, Lord, we just sit we sit at your feet today, God, to know you more. You can do more in a moment like this than any sermon, than, 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 than anything else that we can do, God. And so we invite you right now. Lord, would you flood right where we are? Would you allow the Holy Spirit to just permeate every living room, every kitchen table, wherever people are right now? Whether they're watching live or whether they're watching this as a as a replay, God, would you just permeate every space with your Holy Spirit? Lord, we surrender who we are. We surrender to you. It's not our way, but your way, not our will, but your will. Father, would you right now, in the mighty name of Jesus? invite you right now to just close your eyes right where you are. And if you want to stand, you can do that. And if you don't, that's okay too. But would you just, whether you're sitting or whether you're standing, would you just put your hands up with your palms up like this and just begin to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, I surrender this morning. Even if you're unsure what that means, and we're going to talk about that here in a, in a few moments, but even if you don't know what that means, just say, Lord, I surrender to you today. Have your way in the midst of my joylessness. 
God, whatever situation we find ourselves in, we surrender to you this morning. Flood every place where each person is. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you do a mighty work in each heart and each life as we surrender? We surrender to you this morning. Hallelujah. Now, Father, as we get ready to get into your word, would you just minister to our heart? Would you open our heart this morning to receive your word? We don't want your word to fall on deaf ears or to hard hearts, but God, that you'd soften them so that we may receive everything that you have for us. I don't want to miss it. I don't want anyone who's watching to miss it, God. We want more of you. So help us to not be distracted. Help us not to be scrolling as we're watching this video. Help us to put down the de other devices. Help us to, to, to take these next moments and just be locked in with you, God. There's no better place than in your presence. There's no better place. And if we really want to surrender to you today, if we really want to receive from you today, if we really want to connect with you today, then Lord, we have to do our part. And our part is to surrender. Our part is to sit at your feet. Our part is to stop scrolling and allow you, Lord, to minister to our heart. So we come against distractions and we come against anything that might pull us away from what you desire for these next few moments. Lord, have your way. God, we thank you and we praise you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray these things. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. It is so good to have you with us today as we embark on another uh, message of our infinitely more uh, series as we journey through the life, the miracles, and the teachings of Jesus. So thank you for being here. Thank you, Andy, for leading us into the presence of the Lord through worship. And, and I hope that you take those times of worship seriously, meaning this, that you engage in worship. I, I hope that you're not just sitting and listening, but I hope that you're singing along. I hope that you're closing your eyes or raising your hands as you feel so moved in the presence of the Lord. And take those opportunities and do that. Connect with that. Listen, the Holy Spirit is everywhere all the time. And so you don't have to be in a building to experience the presence of the Lord or the presence of the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are is where he is. And so I, I hope and encourage you uh, to take these times of worship and worship uh, to make sure that you're connecting with God. We're going to start our, our scripture journey today in the book of Matthew, chapter number four. So whether you have the uh, tree version, the paper copy, or whether you're using a, a app on a phone or a tablet or something like that, which I call the e-version. Uh, if you don't have either one of those, then maybe grab a device and put it in a Google search, but we're going to be in the book of Matthew in chapter number four. And before I get into that, just a couple of quick announcements. I like to do those as we transition from worship into the word today, but don't forget to connect with us during the week. On Tuesdays, I'm going to be posting a devotional uh, on this page. And so look for that at some point in the afternoon or the evening. Last Tuesday was our first one, and uh, it went over really well. And, and God has just given me little nuggets that I want to share with you for a few moments in each one of those. So be looking for that on Tuesday afternoon or evening. And then Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock, we're continue, continuing to meet through Zoom. And we're having just a great time of prayer, great time in God's Word, and just a good time, a few minutes of connecting with one another. So I encourage you, make sure that you are uh, joining us for that. Those links, The link to that uh, Zoom time is posted on this Facebook page about 5 o'clock on Thursdays, and so you can join us. We're sending out a weekly church email, and if you have not been receiving that, please reach out to us and either put a, a comment there in the comments section of this right now, or send us an email at info at and we'll make sure we get you added. And finally, we want to say thank you for giving. 
Thank you for your faithfulness. And you have been so faithful in doing that. And we just want to encourage you to keep doing that as the Lord enables, uh, as he enables you financially, but also as he speaks to your heart, uh, as he puts that in your heart and in your spirit to do that. So two ways to give, you can go to our website, www.lifespringlives.com. Once you get there, there's a give tab at the top. You click on that, and it's pretty self-explanatory to walk you through those steps. If you're uncomfortable with that or you don't have, uh, you know, the, the ability to do that, then we just encourage you to mail a check to the church, Life Spring Fellowship at 490 West Lincoln Avenue, Lidditz, Pennsylvania, 17543. And so thank you again. And we just want to, uh, we just want to, to say thank you for your faithfulness and God's faithfulness as well. He is so faithful, even in crazy times like those that we're living in, God is so faithful to continue to provide, continue to provide continue to provide. I want to say hello if you're joining us today and you're brand new, if you've never connected with us before, maybe put that in the message box, uh, the comment section there, or go to the top of the page and drop us a message and let us know uh, that, that you're joining us for the first time. We're so thankful that you're here and we've been praying for you and we pray that God will touch you and bless you in, in a real way today. Let's get into the scripture, let's get into the word, and we've been talking over the last couple weeks about the fact that God has infinitely more in store for you and I. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter number 3, verse number 20, Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Another version says, uh, immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. And it doesn't matter what version you're reading uh, that from, but the, per the point is God has more in store for you. No matter where you are in your, uh, in your journey with Christ, God has more for you. And if you've never asked Christ in your heart, then he desires a relationship. If you have a new relationship with the Lord, he desires to take you further. If you've been serving God for 50 years, there's still more that he wants to show you. There's still more that he has in store for you and for you to do. And we just accept that. I hope that you'll accept that. And my challenge for you today is do you want more? Do you want to grow in your relationship with Jesus? Do you want him to continue to, to, to pour into you so that you'll be able to pour out to others? I hope the answer to that question is yes. We've been looking at it over the last couple of weeks of the life of Jesus, and we've been studying through the Gospels and the promises that he made. And today we're going to be talking about some of the I will statements that Jesus has made. The I will statements or the promises that God makes and he strengthens our faith and he declares his plans towards us. Now, before we jump in and get into the scripture, I'm sure that there has been a time that maybe someone you've known, a spouse, a good friend, a child, a parent, has made a promise and they've not been able to keep it. I was trying to think of one that I could share, and the problem is there's a lot to share. A lot of times as I look back over my life where I've said something and I've not been able to hold to it. Some of them I intentionally broke that promise and there were other times where it was completely unintentional but yet the same result happened. There was a promise that was made and for whatever reason there was an inability to follow through with that promise. And it's easy for us to take the hurt and the disappointment of those earthly relationships and those earthly experiences and not let our relationship with our Heavenly Father be affected by that. For example, maybe there was a, a time where a spouse, uh, or, or if you're not married, maybe just a very close relative or, or friend, and, and they made a promise to you and they couldn't keep it for whatever reason, intentional, non-intentional, the point is they couldn't keep it. And so the hurt that came from that, sometimes we have a relationship with our Heavenly Father and the hurt from this earthly relationship we oppose, impose on Him. And it becomes hard to trust our Heavenly Father. But today, through the Scripture, I want you to know that when God makes a promise, when God says, I will, He will. 
When God says, I will, we don't have to doubt, we don't have to worry. He says, I will, he will. Scripture teaches us that all of God's promises are yes and amen through Jesus Christ. Not all of our earthly relationships, not all of those people will keep their promises, but I want to tell you today, God is not a person. God is not like people in that aspect. Yes, he created us. Yes, he loves us unconditionally. Yes, that doesn't change. But when God speaks and says something, you can bank on it. You can stand on it. You don't have to worry about him changing his mind or going a different direction. When he says, I will, he will. They're instant truth. Every declaration of Jesus' lips was guided by the Holy Spirit and originated in the Father's heart. Jesus spoke purposefully and passionately because he has all the power and the authority to implement every word. Jesus spoke purposefully and passionately because he has all the power and authority to implement every word. Jesus doesn't make I will statements based upon what he wants to do. He makes I will statements because he has the power and the authority to do it. And because he has been given all power and authority, when he says I will, he will. Let's jump into the scripture this morning. Some of these scripture references we've actually talked about over the last couple weeks in some of the, the Bible uh, stories and stories about Jesus that we've been reading. But we're starting in Matthew chapter number 4, verse number 19. And this is what Jesus says. He's talking uh, to his disciples, those that he is calling. He's calling right now. He says, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. That's in the New Living Translation. The NIV says, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. I will show you. I will make you. There's an I will. There's a declarative statement. Here, Jesus calls a group of fishermen to drop their nets and follow him. In this moment, he is using what the disciples are used to and what's common to them in the analogy of fishing to let them know that he has something greater. He has something more in store for them. I mean, think about this. When he says, I will show you, I will make you, what he's telling them there is, I see a potential in you. I see that you're able to do greater things than what you're doing right now. And quite honestly, I believe God thinks the same thing about you. He sees a greater potential. He sees a greater purpose. And I believe this morning God is saying, come, follow me, and I will. And then he'll fill in the blank specific to your circumstances, specific to your calling, specific to the plan that he has for you. In our very first uh, uh, message when, that we've been talking about in, in Infinitely More, we said that God knows the end. And everything that he does now is leading us to that end that he has in store. God knows your ultimate purpose. God knows your design and what he has how he has created you and what he has created you for. And so as he says, come, he desires us to do that. And each one of us has that specific calling. Mine is different than yours, and yours is different than mine. It doesn't make mine better. It doesn't make yours better. All of them are perfect because God has orchestrated it. He's saying here, I see more in you. There's something more that I have. In Matthew, same, same book, but back in verse number 11, he says this in, I'm sorry, chapter number 11, verse number 28. Matthew chapter number 11, verse number 28. And this is what he says in the New Living Translation. Then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give 
you rest. Say that. Say, I will. Now, that's not a declarative statement that you and I are making right now, but that's what Jesus says. Jesus is saying, I will. Say that again. Say, I will. That's what Jesus is saying right now. He's speaking again to his disciples, to those who are following him. He says, come to me. I'm reading now the NIV. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Any of you feeling weary and burdened today? Any of you feeling bogged down by stress of life? I can just envision every adult hand up right now. And not just the adults, but kids probably too. Because I know kids, you're doing virtual school right now. For many of you, that's been pretty challenging and it's been quite a transition. And I'm sure you've got yourself into a groove and a pattern, but it's still a burden. It's still something that you're not used to and still getting used to. Listen, we're all carrying around some burdens. We're all feeling a little weary right now because of the corona and different shutdown and what's opening and what's closed and when will that happen and what I heard today is different than what I heard yesterday and it's probably going to be different than what I hear tomorrow and it's just, it's so much but Jesus says, I will give you rest. Today I want you to know that he will give you rest. There's something common here in, in, the, in the portion of scripture in Matthew 4.19 and then here in 11.28 he says in 4.19 come follow me here he says, come to me, before he says, I will, and whatever those statements are. But this is a great moment right here. You know, that this, first Jesus is telling the disciples, or yeah, he's telling the disciples, he's saying, I see more of you. I have more in store for you. And here, Jesus is saying, and I'll give you rest from your burdens. I'll give you rest from your trouble. I'll give you rest. And, and we don't know the thoughts of these Disciples, We don't know the thought pattern and what's going on inside, but, you know, these are some things that I can imagine they were pretty excited about. Here's a man, pretend that you're a disciple. Here's a man that's coming to me, he says, follow me and I'll make you a fisher of men. I'm going to do something I've never done before. Here's somebody who sees some potential in me, so he's, they're going to follow him. And we're following him, and he knows the, the, the burdens, and he knows how weary people are, and he knows the, the, just the stresses of life. Because remember, Jesus is an intimate person. He knows us intimately. He knows our thoughts, and he knows our feelings and our emotions. And now he's saying, I'll give you rest. I mean, he, he's really kind of hitting the nail right on the head, and he's hitting it for us today, too. Here's some three more I will statements as Jesus continues to encourage his disciples and build their faith. They come from the Gospel of John. So you're in Matthew. Next is Mark, Luke, and then turn with me to the Gospel of John. And we're going to start in chapter number 6. The Gospel of John, chapter number 36. We were here just a week or two ago and we talked about Jesus feeding a multitude of people with just a couple of loaves of bread and fish. We referred to this next part of the, the chapter a couple of weeks ago. We talked about the storm that was raging and Jesus calling Peter out to walk on the water. And now here in this next part, starting in verse number 25, John chapter number 6, verse number 25, Jesus talks about him. He's the bread of life. But we're going to skip down and read in verse number 37. And this is what Jesus says. John chapter number 6, verse number 37. The Father has given me will come to me and I will never reject them. He's saying that personally though. I'll never reject you. I'm going to read that in the NIV. It says all that the Father gives me will come to me and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. Gospel of John chapter number 14 verse number 21 and this is what the scripture reads. Let me turn there in my Bible. John 14, verse number 21. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. 
He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. The New Living Translation says, And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. It's personal. Jesus says, I will love you if you come to me. I will reveal myself to you if you're willing to love me and follow my will. Same chapter, John 14, but back a couple of verses to verse 14. And it says, yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Say, I will do it. Because he will do it just like he said. Look at the great things that Jesus declares for them to do. How encouraging it must have been to know that he was going to be with them every step of the way. Jesus is letting everyone know that there are advantages to being in relationship with him. And here is another incredible faith building I will statement. Back to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 16. Turn with me there. I, I know we're going back and forth through a couple different books, but I want you to get, just catch a glimpse of some of the things that Jesus is speaking to. And then I'm going to tie it all together in just a moment. Matthew, chapter number 16, and verse number 18. In the New Living Translation, he says, And now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And the powers of hell will not conquer it. NIV says, And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. He says, I will build my church. Jesus isn't talking about a building when he says, I will build my church. What he's talking about here is a movement. As he begins to draw people unto himself, he was declaring that he is going to build his kingdom here on earth. He is declaring that he is going to build a movement of people who are called by his name to go out and push back the darkness that's existing in the world. I want you to catch this. He is not saying, I will build my church, meaning we're going to put together a, some walls and a roof and put some chairs and call it a sanctuary and people come worship me. That's not what he was saying in this portion of scripture. He is saying, I am going to take you, Peter, just an ordinary guy who has had great successes and quite honestly, great failures. By the way, you and I are just like Peter. We have moments that we shine, and we have moments that we fall flat on our face. I do. We have those moments like that. And Jesus here is telling Peter, despite all of that, I'm going to call you Peter, which means rock. And I will build my church through you. So much so that the power of hell will not conquer it. It will not demolish it and it will not stop it. Jesus is building a movement of people who are called by his name to go out and push back the darkness that's existing in the world. You're part of that movement. Those of you that know Jesus is your Lord and Savior, here's the challenge question for us today. Are you moving? Because Jesus is building a movement. The body of Christ, and that's the picture that scripture paints for us, the body. It's a body in, in 1 Corinthians. He paints that picture. If, if you have served the Lord for uh, some time, you'll, you'll recognize that portion of Scripture. It says that the body is made up of many parts. And you and I, we have many parts in our body. We have fingers and we have toes and we have hands and we have feet and we have legs and arms and a head. And some of us have hair and, and we have all different parts of our body. And each part makes up the whole functioning unit. Well, us as believers, each one of us, 
is, is a representation. It's just one member of that body. It's just one piece of that body. And when we come together, we are the body of Christ. And Jesus has built us as a body not to stand still. He has purposed us as a body to be moving, to be building his kingdom, to be telling other people about who he is, telling other people about the love and the grace and the forgiveness and the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's building a movement of people. You and I as believers need to ask ourselves the challenging question, are we moving pausing on purpose because I want you to take a moment and think about that. I, I want you to honestly consider that question this morning. Are you moving? If the answer is no, today's the day that that can change. Because I believe God has more. Just like he said to those fishermen, come follow me, I'll make you fisher of men. I believe God is looking at us today and saying, come, come closer. Whether you're 27 steps away or whether you're seven steps away or whether, no matter how far, come, I have more. Come, I have a plan. Come, I have something else that's beyond what you can think or even imagine. Come. Because he's building a movement of people. The Greek word that Jesus uses here for church is ecclesia. And it carries two, it's, it, the, the meaning is, is two parts. The ek, the first part means out. And the kelio means to call. So really when he says the church, he's talking about those who have been called out. Those who have been separated, those who have, uh, uh, excuse me, those who have been called out, they've been called out of their homes, they've been called out of the routines, they've been called out of, the, uh, of the, the normal, and they've said, here I am, Lord. And he's sending us into the marketplace. He's calling people out of sin and calling them into new life. And you and I form the foundation of the body of Christ. Listen here in these several portions of scripture. Jesus is letting them know what he's prepared for them. He's letting them know what he can offer them. He offers them rest. He offers them love. He offers them purpose. And he wants them to know that if they'll trust him and keep their eyes on him, they will have everything that they need to walk in what he has called them to. In John chapter number 16, verse number 7, Gospel of John chapter number 16, verse number 7, New Living Translation says this, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Listen real quickly, this is Jesus. He's talking to his disciples. It's right before he's arrested. It's right before he is uh, beaten. It is right before he dies, and it's right before this all is happening right before he resurrects. He's having this moment with his disciples. It's just 13 of them in the room, and he's talking to them. He's preparing them for his, his going away. He says, but in fact, it's best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate, some versions say the comforter, the counselor, won't come. If I do go away, then I will Send him to you. Him there is the Holy Spirit. It is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, I will send him to you. And the NIV reads this, but I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Listen, 
The statements that Jesus makes, these I will statements, keep getting better and better. I have a plan for you. There's more for you. I love you. I'll give you rest. I'll give you peace. I'm going to build the most important things on your life and through your faith. And then he says, I'm going to leave you, which, wait a second, hold on, wait, say that again. He says all these great statements, but then he throws that in there in, in the first part of, of verse number seven. He says, I'm going to leave you. I will leave you. I am going to do it. But he comforts them as well, letting them know that he's going to bring, he's going to send the advocate, the counselor, the, the comforter. The Greek word for that there is uh, parakletos which is rich in meaning and is translated as counselor, strengthener, comforter, help, helper, advisor, advocate, ally, friend, intercessor. I'm going away in the physical body, but I'm sending an ally, an advocate, a friend, an intercessor, a comforter, a counselor, a strengthener, and he will help you. I will do it. Today I want you to receive these I will statements that Jesus makes. Finally, in John 14, 3, Jesus says, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Jesus promises that he will come back again. And don't forget, he keeps his promises Based on the truth and every other statement that he's made, there's no reason to think that he would go back on this statement as well. Jesus said he would raise from the dead, and he did. He said he would conquer death, and he did. He said he would present himself after that, and he did. He said he was going to go back to the Father, and he did. And so there's no reason when Jesus says, I will come back, that you and I should doubt that. Now, do we know when that's going to happen? No, we don't know when. But he will. He will come back. He will show us how to fish for people. He will give us rest. He will never reject us. He will love us. He will reveal himself to us. He will do anything we ask in his name. He will use us to build his church. He will give us the Holy Spirit. And he will return. That's the summation of every I will statement that we looked at this morning. The next step for you and I is making sure that our will lines up with his will. And can I tell you today that when his will becomes our will, great things happen. Let me say that again. When his I will becomes our will, great things will happen. We'll reach more people. We'll experience greater rest, greater love, greater satisfaction. We'll see results from prayers. We'll see the church growing in numbers. We'll see people turning their heart to Jesus. We'll see the church impacting their community, and we'll see them impacting the world. Now, I want to pause for just a moment. These are great statements. And again, when he says, I will, he'll do every single one of them. I'm going to go back in my notes to the very first statement. And you don't have to go back because I'm going to go quickly. But I want to read each part of these very quickly. So Matthew 4.19, he says, come, follow me, and I will show you. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, he says, Come to me, all of you who are weary and have carry heavy burdens. I will give you rest. John 6, 37, The Father has given to me, and they will come to me, and I will never reject them. John 14, 21, Because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. John 14, 14, yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Every one of those statements that Jesus makes, here's an observation that I've made, and here's one that I want to pass along. Because, church, I believe it's key to 
to unlocking the I wills of Jesus. Every one of those statements requires something of you and I. Every one of those statements you and I have to act in order for Jesus to do his part. Now you may say, that's unfair. I don't know. It, it, it. Listen, listen. I don't want you to get hung up on that in this. God required, listen, Matthew 4 20, excuse me, Matthew 4 19, come, follow me. What's he asking Peter and John and James and the others that were listening there? He's asking them to take a step towards him. Come to me, and I'll show you how to fish for people. What did they have to do? They had to take that first step towards Jesus, and as they took that step, what is he going to do? Everything else that needed to be done so that they could fish for people. He was going to show them. He was going to teach them. He was going to invest in them. He was going to do everything else. All they had to do was take the first step. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, he said, Come to me, those of you who are weary and carry heavy, bur heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. What do we have to do? Come towards Jesus. You say, well, I, I don't understand what that looks like. I don't, I don't know. And listen, that's a great question. Because it's not like I can say, uh, come to where I am. How do I do that? How do I do that? If I want to go get uh, food from the from the takeout, we used to just have to go there. Of course, now there's apps and you can order online. They'll, they'll deliver it to you. But we don't have to necessarily, listen to what I'm saying. Follow me here. You don't have to go where Jesus is for him to give you rest. He says, come. You know what that means? We need to put our eyes Fix them on him. We need to stop what we're doing and allow him to give us rest. I think I shared this testimony already, but I'll share it briefly again. A couple of weeks ago, I got up on an early one morning. I believe it was a Monday. It doesn't matter what day of the week, but man, I was just feeling weary in my physical body. I was feeling weary mentally. I was feeling weary spiritually. So I went and I grabbed my cup of coffee and I grabbed my phone so I could open up my Bible app and I sat down on the love seat and I, you know what, I, there's no ounce of energy in me that felt like opening up that Bible and going to a verse of scripture, a portion of scripture and reading. I, listen, I'm just being honest with you. And so I thought, you know what, I'm just going to take a moment and listen to a song. Maybe that will just kind of kickstart me along with that coffee and get me to where I was wanted to be, where I, I was hoping to be. And so I took some earbuds and plugged them in, and I opened up YouTube on my phone, and, and, and I didn't recognize. And I was like, I didn't want to think about what song, and just, Lord, just, you know, if whatever's there. And it, there wasn't anything there that would have met that need, so I just scrolled and touched. You know, Lord, I've, I've never heard this song before, and I touched that song, and it began to play. And I just closed my eyes and I just sat. I don't worry about reading my Bible in that moment. In that moment, I wasn't worried about what was next on the agenda. I just came to Jesus. I didn't have to get my car and drive anywhere. I didn't have to do it. I just had to say, Lord, I'm here. That was my step. In that moment, just my step towards him in that moment was just saying, here I am. And I believe that when he says, come to me, and we use this scripture as an example, come to me, those of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. When he says, come to me, that's not another task. That's not another heavy thing that you and I have to carry. It's us saying, God, here I am. That's coming that's coming into his presence. That's coming to where he is. It's just a step that says, God, here I am, and I need you. And when we can take that step into his presence and just allow him then to purge.
permeate where we are. He begins to fill us. He begins to strengthen us. He begins to supply us with what we need. When that song was over, this is like a five and a half minute song. When that song was over, I felt strengthened inside. Listen, it wasn't about the song. Oh, it was a great song, great lyrics. I loved it. But it wasn't about that song in the moment. It was about allowing the Lord to come into where I was, to permeate my space. And it was allowing him to fill me with what was lacking. It required something of me, though. I had to stop my agenda. I had to stop what I was doing. And I had to allow myself to come into his presence. I didn't have to go to a different room. I could stay right where I was. But mentally, I said, that's enough. I need Jesus. And I stopped. That was me in that moment, coming to where Jesus was. Stopping mine. A will, my agenda, my thought, my plan, and said, Lord, here I am. In that moment, I came to where he was. In that moment, I took that step. Come, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Come, all you who are weary and heavy burdened. And the, next, the statement right after both of those is, I will, and then he finishes the statement. When we take that first step, he will. We can continue reading. In John 6, he says, uh, who the Father has given to me will come to me. I'll never reject them. If you come, I won't reject you. And he says, because they love me, I will love them. In John 14, 14, if you ask me for anything, I will do it. It's these simple, covenantial promises that God has in his word. It takes one step of us to walk in his direction and he does everything else. It doesn't require us to figure it out. It doesn't require us to have all the answers. But I want you to know that God, the statements that God made to these disciples is the same, same I will statements he makes to you and I. If you will take that step, he is willing to meet you right where The Jesus, uh, excuse me, the disciples understood that when I give God all I have, he becomes all I need. When I give God all I have, he becomes all I need. Listen, these disciples gave up their jobs. They gave up their identity. They gave up their safety. They gave up their comfort to follow Jesus. And in return... They helped to create the greatest movement the world has ever seen. So much so, that movement is continuing today. You and I are continuing to build upon the movement that Jesus talked about with Peter when he said, I will build my church and the power of hell will not stop it. You and I are continuing to build upon that movement. Paul and Peter, those great men of the Bible that we read about, they continued moving forward with this. And at some point, they had to pass that baton on to somebody else because it was their time to step out. And you and I have picked up that baton as it has been passed down from generation to generation. And we are running with that baton. And if Jesus doesn't come back, we will pass that baton off to somebody else. But listen, I'm not the sole baton carrier. You are a carrier as well. We are carrying that baton together. We are building upon the movement in which has already begun. Imagine what our church and imagine what your city would look like if we made God's will our will. Imagine what this church, this body of believers at Life Spring, imagine what Lidditch or Mannheim or Ephrata or a surrounding community or maybe a distant community because really God is everywhere and he loves every person that's ever been created. Imagine what our communities would look like, our cities would look like if we made God's will our will. 
I believe that when we give God what we have and truly follow his word, which is his will, we will accomplish infinitely more than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. Another challenge question for you. Are you ready to let God's will be your will? You say, well, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. Well, in just a moment, we're going to spend a few moments in prayer. In just a moment, as we as we get ready to conclude, we're, we're going to spend a few minutes, and here's what's going to happen. We're going to pray, and we're going to ask God, Lord, would you allow your will to become my will? Because listen, we're the body of Christ, and that body is moving. And we, God desires us to be a part of it. There are those... And I hope it's no one who's watching now, but there are those that just say, well, I'm saved. And they say one of two things. I'm saved, and so that's good enough. I just, you know, I just want to get to heaven, and that's it. Well, those people, if they continue to love Jesus, they'll get to heaven. But listen, God has more. He has infinitely more. And there's another group of people that think that they can just sit and allow God to do everything and they're just going to sit and receive and receive and receive. And listen, God is sovereign. He knows what he's doing and when he's doing it, how he's doing it and why he's doing it. But he desires relationship. Listen, in any earthly relationship, you know that it, there's give and take in that relationship. There's moments when I need to vent to my wife and she's the receiver. She just listens. And there's moments when she needs to vent and I'm going to listen. There's moments when I give and there's moments when she gives. There's moments when I talk and there's moments when she talks. You see those same examples in your marriage or in your relationships. If it's just one person all the time, that relationship can't thrive. It's not going to succeed. I remember having relationships in high school and in college with, with guys, and, and we were friends and we were buddies, but listen, they were one-sided. And I didn't like always having to be dumped on, and every time I spoke, I was interrupted. I didn't care for that. And you know what? We saw over time those relationships fizzled away. I, I'm not in contact with those people anymore. I, I don't talk to them any longer. But then there were those relationships where it was mutual. There was mutual love. There was mutual respect. There was mutual honor. There was, those things were evident both ways. Those relationships thrive. That's the kind of relationship God desires. Can he just pour out on us and nothing of us is required? He can do that, but he desires a more intimate relationship. He says, come, then I will. Come, and then I will. This morning he's saying to you, come, because I have something more. Come, because I want to give you more. Come, because I have plans that far exceed what you can think or what you can imagine on your own. Come, he says. And so today I give you that, that same request, come. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as we close today. Right where you are, I know. I've been trying to do this a little bit more on Sunday mornings because I want you to know that God's right where you are. You don't have to have an encounter with God at church. You can have an encounter with God right there in your home, right there in your kitchen, right there in your car, wherever you're watching this from. Because God's everywhere. His Holy Spirit is everywhere. I know there's some of you that are longing to get back to the church building. Listen, we desire to meet together corporately as well, but we're not limited by the power of the Holy Spirit because we're not gathered together. God's desiring to pour out more right now, today, right where you are. Don't miss that. We can't cease being the body of Christ because we can't meet together. No, if anything, this should be the time where the body's active right now. Where we're out and we're 
ministering to neighbors, even if that's calling them and checking on them or having video calls or, you know, whatever it might be, encouraging people, praying for people. Boy, if there's ever a time for the body of Christ to be in action, it's now. standing, would you stand with me? Because I believe the Holy Spirit is talking to people this morning. No, it may not be an audible voice like I'm talking to you right now, but He is doing some things on your inside. You can feel it. it don't let, it's not scary, but you can sense that there is something happening in your heart. Listen, that's a good thing. Don't, don't don't try to stop it. Don't push it away. Allow God to do whatever he wants to do. Maybe he's trying to take your burden today, like he said in that scripture we read. Maybe he's revealing the next part of his plan to you. And you just need to be still and allow him to do it. Maybe he's giving you that encouragement and strength because, man, there's just a heaviness and burden that you're carrying today. Maybe he's trying to instill his peace. Because quite honestly, maybe your eyes haven't been set on him and you've become distracted with news and events and financial situations and all sorts of other burdens that are so heavy right now due to the pandemic and, and corona and different things, but maybe there's just so much and God's just saying, I'm here. I'm here to give you some peace and rest today. I'm here to take those burdens if you would just give them to me. Here's a verse of scripture that I like to use because it's right from the word of God and it says, come. Cast your care on me because I care for you. It's another picture of you and I having to let go of something so that God will intervene. It's these covenantal promises that we see all throughout the word of God. He says, if you'll do this, then I'll do everything else. But seek me first. Kingdom of God. And I'll add all these things unto you. If my people who are called by my name will do these couple of things, then will I heal, hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. All throughout God's word. asks us to take the first step so that he'll meet us right there. That's how we know this is relationship and not religion. If it was religion, it would just be do these three things and it's all taken care of. God's not seeking religion. He's seeking relationship today. And he's seeking it with you. And he doesn't care where you've been or what you've done. Because he loves you with an everlasting, never-changing love that you can't comprehend. I can't comprehend the love that God has for me, but I know because he sent his son Jesus to die for my sin. That's how I know. When Jesus died for your sin. And so today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you say, you know what, some of those I will statements that Jesus made, I need them in my life. You can have them if you'll take that first step towards him. If you'll humble yourself and say, God, I need you in my life. Forgive me of my sin. Because he's calling you out. Remember, we studied that just a couple of moments ago. He's calling you out from where you were to where he desires you to be. Will you take that step? Will you take that first step this morning? Will you take that step towards him and say, God, here I am. Because if you're willing to 
take that step. He'll meet you right there. He says he'll forgive you of your sin and he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And not only will he cleanse you, but then he'll take that sin and he'll remove it from you as if it never happened. Never to be brought up again. his I will statement. So if you're watching, whether it's live or you're watching this later, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, take that step towards him today. You may not know the journey, what the journey is going to look like. You may not know what his end destination for your life is, but I promise you, it is the greatest first step you will ever take. We're going to pray that this morning. And then when we conclude that prayer, I'm going to go right into the second part of the prayer. Let me tell you what that is real quickly, and then we're going to pray and the service will be over. So just hang with me a couple more moments. Right now, for those who 
who already know you, but they are desiring something new of you today. God, whatever that might be, some are searching for their place in the body. Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, would you show them? Lord, even if it's just a little nugget, even if it's just a little piece, even if it's just a, a little bit. Some in this moment, God, they aren't searching for that, but they're searching for peace. They're searching for an answer. They're searching for direction. They're searching for something. God, right now in Jesus' name, would you give that to them? Help them to sense the Holy Spirit. Because you said it is so important that I go away so that I can send the Holy Spirit. And your word teaches us that when we ask you, Jesus, into our heart, that you give us the Holy Spirit as a deposit of what's to come. Holy Spirit, would you speak to the hearts and the minds and the lives of those who are watching today? You know what they need. You know what they're lacking. You know what they're desiring. You know what they're hoping for. You know what they're struggling with. And so, Father, we just pray for them. God, we know your promises are true. We know that we don't have to try for it. We don't have to strive for it. We just have to come to you. And God, today I pray that you'd help us to rest in your promises. No word that you speak ever comes back void. So Father, soften our heart to receive these words today. You said in your word that you'd be near to the brokenhearted. You said that you would make the way straight. You said that you would give peace, hope, joy, and comfort. So, Father, today we say, here we are. We're responding to your instruction that says, come to me. Lord, here we are. Have your way. Here we are. Jesus. 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 Take 30 more seconds and then we're going to close in prayer. Tell them what you want. Tell them what you want right now. Tell him what you want right now. Because I believe he'll do it. I believe he'll give it. I believe he desires. Now, Father, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness, your kindness, and your faithfulness. Father, I ask your blessing upon your people today. For those who have been watching, those who have caught maybe just a few moments, maybe they're already gone, but Father, I ask your blessing upon them today. Be with us, minister to us, and use us, dear Lamb of God. Let your will become our will. Now, God, we thank you and we praise you. And we pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being a part of the broadcast. And, and we're praying for you. Listen, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please reach out to us today. Maybe go to the top of this page to the message. Click it and just tell us, I prayed and asked Jesus to be my Lord. Or I prayed with you today. Something very simple or Go ahead and send us a long message. It doesn't matter, but we want to connect with you. God bless you. Hope to connect with you at some point this week as well. Have a great week.